Okay, so we're going to start assignment three today, which means I need to open up my digital art folder. And what we're doing is we're taking assignments one and two and combining them. So the first thing we need is our landscape, our fantasy landscape. We want to find our high res PSD file. Now there are two files we had. We had the one that we actually submitted, which might have been color processed, and this is what mine looked like. But then the PSD might be before kind of overall processing, before we flattened everything. Let me open that up in preview. You'll see it's slightly different, not much different. It just doesn't have the sharpness. But we want to open the PSD because we want availability of these different layers. Because we might want to integrate our creature behind one layer and in front of another. And instead of having to cut it all out and make that up again, this will help us do that. So go ahead and open that up. Then we're going to go to assignment two. And we're going to open up our creature that is flattened but flattened isn't the right word, it's actually merged together. And so that's going to be my TIFF right here. So if you open it up in preview just by double clicking if it's a TIFF. Let's see. We want to see the empty space around it like this. So that we can just transplant that. There's a few rough edges, but we can transplant that like a sticker right onto our landscape without having to cut out the background. So. I'm going to open that in Photoshop. So now I have these two things in Photoshop. You see the empty background here. I'm going to go ahead and merge these all together because I did different color processing. This was my favorite. I'm going to sweep that, that out. And my first step is to simply take this layer. And I can do it either from the image itself like this or I can actually take it from the layer, which is sometimes easier, and then just drag and drop onto my landscape. I can hold down shift. I'm holding down shift and option so it shrinks towards the middle here, but keeps all the proportions. And then I want to decide, okay, where does it make sense in terms of the lighting of the scene, in terms of the composition? where does it make sense for this creature to go? And I'm going to use it to kind of hide some things I don't like. Right. You can also use this opportunity to right click or control click and flip your negative. Maybe you want him going the other way. So that is largely up to you. So what I'm going to ask of you is that you put your creature into the, the picture, but you make sure that the creature is at least 25% of the overall image. And you're not required to use all of your landscape. If you want to use just a portion of your landscape, that is okay. But I'm going to put mine about right, let's say here. I don't want them to get kind of muddied up. Well, maybe I do with this glacier behind. Maybe I'll put them in front of the whale. Make them a little bit larger. Hard to know. I like this kind of shadow effect here. And so ideally, I'd kind of put them maybe back here, covering up that glacier. So let's do that. OK, so then I hit return. Now he's transformed. Notice that he went in above whatever layer I dragged him in on. So I can close this now don't need that anymore. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set him back in the layers. So I can do that by physically dragging him down, down through the texture fills. You can see how that affects his color. Texture fills do a lot to kind of mix him in. Down through these other layers, like so. Another way to move down instead of just clicking and dragging is to use command left bracket to move the layer down, command right bracket to move the, the layer up. And this can be incredibly helpful. So I think I want him about right there.
and that one texture fill seems a little rough edged. So I'm going to start messing with the layers around. A lot of soft erasing. There's really no new techniques here that we haven't tried on the first two assignments. It's just putting it all together for a different reason, trying to get a more believable integration of these elements. Okay, so now we have some obvious issues. If I look up close, I can see that the edges of my character are a little too sharp. So what I'm going to do is go onto my character layer, and I'm going to select all of the shapes around him. I'm actually going to turn off contiguous. This is all the empty space. And then I'm going to use the refine edge selection. And I'm going to shift the edge up about 25%. That will cut into my pixels. And I want about 25% of around 10 pixels. And you'll see what that does. It's very subtle, but it moves the selection in a little bit, like so. And that, I'm going to hit delete once, and that's going to take the bloom off of that edge. Now that edge is pretty crisp still, but now I don't have that kind of white, white change. I'm going to show you the difference. You can see the white here on the edges. Little things I just didn't get out perfectly. I hit delete once, it all goes away. So that's the refine edge tool, very helpful. It's still maybe a little bit too hard edged everywhere. Though that's not terrible, but if I wanted to just soften it a little bit, I could also refine the edge with feathering. So I'm going to turn contiguous on this time. And now if I refine edge, and I'm just going to feather it in a tiny bit, just maybe two pixels. What feathering does is it actually makes a slight gradation at the edge, like so. So it softens and lets the environment kind of bleed through the edges just a little bit. So it feels a little bit softer, a little bit more believable. I want to do that in here as well. Okay. So now my creature is looking pretty good, but the problem is he's not sinking into this environment yet. So the first thing you want to look at is where the feet are touching. And I'm kind of lucky because I've got rocks back here and then he's got rocks for feet, but I've got this, this whale skeleton in the way. So I'm going to take that, that whale layer. I'm actually going to do a rough selection around those whale bones where his foot is. And then I'm going to duplicate that onto its own layer. And I'm going to move that layer. I can use command right bracket and move it up above on top of my creature. Then I'm going to zoom in I'm using command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out, and command zero to fit everything on the screen. I'm going to take the opacity down about halfway so I can see the whale coming through. Might even have to take a little bit more than halfway. It's maybe at about 60%. And I'm going to erase now around those whale bones. Now there's a lot of ways you can do it. You can just do it with a hand eraser, but I'm going to start with just a pretty rough cutout with my lasso. Because when you have a tablet, it's not hard to use your, your lasso really effectively for pretty good quality selections. Now notice I'm not cutting into the bones at all. I'm, I'm giving them a little bit of space. And mostly it's not going to matter. It's just where that foot is. Then I hit delete. Okay. Now I can take it up to 100%. You can see what I have. Can hit Command Zero, fit it all on the screen. 
and just that little that little tip helps kind of push him back into the environment much more believably though his feet are very very strongly contrasted for this environment okay so now how do I clean it up I'm just going to use a 100% eraser fairly small and pretty sharp and again with my tablet now I'm just going to erase a little bit more cleanly where it actually is overlapping with my creature's foot again the rock camouflage is, is kind of a blessing for this project Sometimes in order to make things look more believable, we have to simplify. Sometimes you have to sacrifice parts of your, your fantasy landscape that you like by allowing them to be colored over or not so prominent in the composition or just covered by your creature. But the idea is that one is a setting, an environment, and then the other is what's called a figurative element that changes on that environment. And so moment to moment, you're not going to see everything you like in the setting as the creature passes over it, whether it's a video game or whatever reason you have. I actually like this big rock. I think I'm going to keep that in there. The idea is to try to just keep it as engaging as you can. All right, so that seam is working out. So that's step one. Now it's a good time to save it. And I'm going to save it as, now it's going to be assignment three. And instead of fantasy landscape, we're going to call it a creature scape. It's going to be a PSD. We're going to save it to the desktop. I navigate to the desktop by going Command D while I'm in this, this destination save folder or window. All right, now we get on to kind of the, the easier stuff. Just playing with the color, playing with texture fills, and thinking how we can make it really work in the environment. So, first thing I'm gonna do, just gonna go to adjustments and levels. And for this environment, I might limit some of his darks a little bit, just a bit. I can play with lightening him overall or darkening him overall in the midtones. And I always just push it back and forth and see which one makes more sense. Zero there in the middle or one there in the middle is perfectly centered. So do I want to go less than one and make him darker in the midtones? Kind of helps him show up, but I don't know if that's really fitting. Or do I want to make him lighter? I think I want to go just a little bit lighter. You can push your highlights brighter. This is kind of harsher light, so I might push my highlights up just a little bit. Do I want to deepen my shadows? I don't think so, not for this. In fact, I already limited them a little bit. So this works pretty well. Next, I want to play with the color. So just slightly different. There's very warm colors on my creature. So I'm going to take the midtones and I'm going to shift them from the yellows just a little bit to the blues, a little bit from the reds to the cyans. Again, you can push it pretty far and see which one's more helpful in matching with the colors of your environment. And you can do it also on the highlights. I'm going to keep some of the warms in the highlights. So it really stands out. I don't want it to camouflage too much into the landscape. And I really want that red lava to glow. And in the shadows. Usually if I do warm highlights, I'll do cooler colors in the shadows. Give it more dimensionality. But this environment actually has a lot of warm shadows. so. It's all based on what looks good in the environment.